the show and tell show. We're here to help today's woman, that's you, and me, find solutions to the challenges of life here in the fast lane. We heard you when you said that you want to be the best for yourself and for those you love, and you want to have fun along the way. So today, our episode is chock full of essential information, fun facts, and opportunities to hear from other women working to keep all the balls in the air. But first, as always, let's meet today's pet mascots who are from Bunny World Foundation. Hi guys! Hi. <laughs> who do we have with us? We have Ice Cream and Sammy. Oh, <laughs> These so are cute. two of our adoptable bunnies uh, that are currently in our network. Very good. <laughs> and, um, and this is Allison and Brianna. Yeah. How old are you, Brianna? I'm 13. 13 mm -hmm. and already volunteering, aren't you good? Um, so what is the mission of Bunny World Foundation? We're um, an all-volunteer 501c3 nonprofit promoting the welfare and advocacy yeah. for bunny rabbits. Very good, very good. And I understand, Brianna, did you just foster some baby bunnies recently? Uh, yes. What was that all about? Uh, well, Jane, one of the volunteers, yeah. had um, picked up some bunnies that were on the kill list from yeah. a shelter. Yeah. And then when they came to bunny adoptions on Sunday, I just fell in love. And I begged my mom to take them home and foster them. And you got sucked into it uh, many times. <laughs> Very good. Not That's the, what it's all about. It's it wasn't the about. first time. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, we're so glad that you guys could be with us. And thank you, Ice Cream and Sammy, for being with us. And we're going to be here. Um, you guys are going to be here through the whole episode, so we'll check back in with you later, okay? Thank you. All right, very good. Now, let's bring out our favorite certified style expert, Rain Parvis, for our viewer question. Come on over. Hi, Rain. Hi, happy to be here. <laughs> we're so glad that you could be here. You're going to be helping us out throughout the show, mm -hmm. and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, can you tell us what the viewer question is? Absolutely. Okay, so we want to hear what's on your mind. So please log on to our website, theshowandtellshow.tv, and share your answers to the following question. What advice would you give your teenage self that you wish someone had given you? The first 50 responses will win a special memento from the Show and Tell Show. That's a good question. I'm going to have to give that one some thought. I blocked mm -hmm. those years out. But <laughs> now Rain is going to introduce us to today's panelists who will be with us on set throughout the episode and will share their thoughts after each segment. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you to take to Facebook or Twitter and share your opinions right along with them. So Rain, who are today's panelists? First, we have Laurel Gail Diamond, who is a personal trainer with her own DVD, Fitness DVD, and she is married with four children. Hey, Laura. Hi. Hi. Next, we have Patricia Smith, is an author, artist, and lyricist who loves travel and sharing her observations of the human condition. She is an aunt to two nieces and four nephews and a second to mom to many more. I am not a parent, she says, and you don't have to be to enjoy the show and tell show That's either. Right. And finally, we have Monica Estrada Nunez, a married working mother of two girls who loves cooking and traveling to new places. Well, welcome, everybody. It's great to have you with us. Are you ready to share your opinions? Absolutely. Yes. Well, we're excited to hear them. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk with author Ivy Sun about tiger moms versus kitten moms and creating happiness no matter what your parenting approach. We'll see you in a minute. Tiger Mom by Amy Chua ignited a firestorm of opinions about the role of tiger versus kitten mothers and how the highly disciplined parenting approaches of some Asian Americans versus the more laissez-faire parenting and practices of many European Americans impacts happiness and parental ties when children become adults. A recent study from Stanford University found that adult children from both backgrounds feel equally supported and have good relationships with their mothers, so that's good news. But what about happiness along the journey? Ivy Sun is an educator and co-author of Practice Happiness, Seven Habits of Joyful Living, and she is here with us to talk about tiger moms versus kitten moms and creating happiness while helping kids reach their potential. Welcome, Ivy. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> the reality is that both so-called tiger moms and kitten moms love and want what's best for their children. So what is the, the core difference between the two approaches? Well, obviously, the tiger mom refers to mom who's very strict, high yeah. expectation, yeah. demanding. Mm -hmm. They probably have mapped out a whole life for the child since mm -hmm. day one. Yeah. 
They are goal-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, probably Kitty Mom serves the other side, opposite side of it. Um, personally, I really don't think it matters that much which style you are, yeah. uh, you choose to be. Um, and every child is different, every family is different. Yeah. To me, the most important thing will be their relationship. Yeah. Once you have good relationship with the children, yeah. things will be easier. Yeah. So I would suggest that start opening up the communication channel yeah. and keep a very healthy, uh, strong relation yeah. with uh, interaction pattern yep. established. Yes, tell us about your tips for, for both approaches for keeping joy and happiness within the family. Um, well, in my book, we mentioned three habits. Yeah. Um, well, I, I want to only touch upon three of them if yes. time allows. Yeah. Um, one is um, provide time and space. Mm -hmm. I think it would be more specific, provide enough time and space. Because um, if you are familiar with using the uh, pressure cooker, yes. the pressure cooker has limited time. They, they just condense the time and space. Yeah. So if we do that to our children or to ourselves, you can imagine uh, life won't be happy. You don't yeah. want to live in a pressure cooker all yeah. the time. So allow people and yourself to have more time and to space. Re to relax and right. away from the focus right. Of, right. of the goal. Well, a, a little story. My uh, four-year-old granddaughter came mm -hmm. to our house and uh, played and had too much work to do and activities. Yeah. And she was tired. By the yeah. time they were leaving, the parents said, let's brush your teeth, um, change your it changed into PJ so you can get in bed right away. That's yeah. the parent's goal. Yeah. But the child was tired. She did not want to do anything. Mm -hmm. So I can hear from the bathroom the screaming and yelling. You know, the yep. parents say, well, you have to brush your teeth. You, you cannot go to bed without brushing your teeth. It's not good for you. Yeah. The child did not want to brush your teeth yeah. because she's tired. Yeah. She's not against the brushing teeth. Yeah. So it's not a time to push her into doing what you want her to do and it just yeah. for your own good. Yeah. <laughs> choose your battles, right? So we're, we're closing in on, on, our, on our time, so what are the other two tips that you um, want to touch the on? The other one is um, give a pride for empathy. Yeah. Mainly is... Uh, give a pride for, for empathy. empathy. I, I would say it is listening. Yeah. It's hard to listen. It's, it's, more, uh, it's harder to listen than speaking. Yeah. And parents choose to talk more than listening. Mm -hmm. And listening is just not with your ears. You have to use your eyes and your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, like my granddaughter, parents were not dealing with her feelings. She's tired. Yeah. They did not listen to, well, of course, she will not say, I'm tired, so I'm not going to do. She's not going to say that. She will yeah. just fight back what you want her to do. And she, the, the way she's showing it is just, just tantrum and yelling. Yeah. It's nobody's fault. It just, you know, parents missed one little step of recognizing her feeling. Yeah. Um, the, the, I just want to finish the other one then. <laughs> the very last yeah, the one, one I want to tip. mention today. Well, total we have seven habits. Yes. Uh, well, you want, these, are the, these are the three that we want to focus on. Right, so, what's right, the third right. one? The third one is uh, actually, I think it's the most important one. It's called balance, yeah. maintain the balance. Yeah. Um, balance is the key to everything. Mm -hmm. If you want to be happy, healthy, balance is the key. Yeah. Uh, very simple. When we walk, you lose balance, you fall. Yeah. You get hurt and any kind of chemical in your body lost balance, you get mm -hmm. sick. So emotionally the same way, spiritual the same way. If you lose your balance, you will be sick. So in order to maintain a healthy body, mind, and soul, yeah. try to keep the balance. Very so good. regardless, tiger, kitty, rabbit, yeah. I really don't <laughs> care too much about it. I really prefer to be yes. called dear mom. Dear mom. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thank you so much, Ivy. Thank now, you. Now let's uh, turn it over to our panelists. Rain, what are, what are we going to ask our panelists? Awesome ones resonates with you the most, and why? Laura? Laura? Oops, sorry? Um, well, actually, I like the third one, and maintaining a balance. Mm -hmm. Because it's really important to maintain that balance in your healthy, healthy life, especially with the physical fitness, and maintaining a balance as a mom, having your own mom, and not, not only being a mom, but being your own person as well. Yeah. Love it. Patricia, what, what about you? Uh, I think the second one about listening really, mm. really resonated with me. I guess um, because I have nieces and nephews, they feel like they can confide in me in ways that they can't with their parents. Yes. And it's because I'm not 
barraging them with questions about what did you do, how did you do it, how do you feel about it, how is this working for you, and they just, they open up, yeah. and I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. They don't feel that the pressure of, of, of getting your approval or pleasing you in the Correct. way that they were their parents. Absolutely, they can just be, and yeah. they can be authentic. Yeah. That's right. Um, I agree with everything that's been said, but for me, balance. I'm a mom raising two girls. I'm a strong woman. I want them to be strong, but I also want them to feel loved. Yeah. But I also want them to know there's expectations mm -hmm. So uh, for them to thrive. So the balance is key for me. OK, thank you, panelists. And a very special thank you to Ivy Sun for these terrific tips that are really relevant not just to parents, but to anyone wanting to strengthen relationships. We'll be right back with writer, blogger, and entrepreneur, Katherine Connors. <music> Connor's blog, Her Bad Mother, has garnered international attention as one of the original and most high-profile parenting blogs in North America. She has parlayed her experience into a highly successful career in digital media, but like, like any working mom knows, those decisions we make about whether and how much to lean into our careers when we have children is not easy to make. Today, Catherine is here to share with us her inspiring story and tell us about her new media adventure, uh, Project Maverick. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Uh, when you created Her Bad Mother, uh, which incidentally was named one of Time Magazine's top blog, top 25 blogs of 2012, yep. you were at a crossroads in your own career. But with Her Bad Mother, you became a leading voice uh, in, in, in a movement that was, that was women who felt like they had to be perfect mothers. And it really spoke to the fact that you really can't or don't have to put that pressure onto yourself. So tell us about that personal journey that led you there. Uh, well, you summarized it very well there was. for me. <laughs> that was it. No, I mean, you're, you're quite right that at the time when I started Her Bad Mother, I was absolutely at a crossroads. Yeah. I had just had my daughter, Amelia. Yeah. She was five or six weeks old at the time. Yeah. I was on maternity leave um, from the University of Toronto. I was a sessional lecturer in political philosophy. Yeah. And it, for the first time in my life, I was kind of at a loss. You know, mm -hmm. I'd been a very sort of high-performing, high-functioning, yes. ambitious yeah. woman. You know, I had a whole career in academia planned out. Um, I timed Amelia's birth to like go in between finishing my PhD, yeah. completing my sessional mm -hmm. contract, and applying for jobs. You're a scheduler. I was a, I was a yeah. scheduler, <laughs> and Amelia came along, and it was like, whoa! Changed I had changed everything. Yeah. Um, for the first time in my life, I felt really at a loss. Yeah. And I mean, it, it happened as as one did at the time, and as one still does. That yeah. in my moments of feeling at a loss, I went to Google, yeah. you know, and searched for help, community, whatever I could find on yeah. the state of being a new mom. And I, I stumbled across my first mom blog. They weren't even called mom blogs at the time. Yeah. They were called baby blogs. There uh -huh. were, you know, very few of them compared to now. Mm -hmm. And I, I was both inspired and moved and impassioned. And it, you know, to say that it changed my life would be to understate it. Actually, I found a community. I found an outlet for my own ideas, my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it was crucial to you put it very, very well that at the time, and it's still to some extent true. A lot of the conventional media narratives about parenthood were that it was just all roses and daisies, yeah. you know, sunbeams and wheat yes. fields. Yes. And that was not my experience. Right. <laughs> it was well, which is interesting because then from her bad mother, Disney came to you and saw your success and Disney being a company that, that at the time had really been that that feeling of, of of projecting that image, yes. Um, and so it's interesting then that they came to you to, to to sort of reshape things. And from Disney, you formed your own media company, and now which brings you to uh, Project Maverick. So, tell us about how you've changed then since her bad mother to now mm -hmm. a new project, and let us know what what you're doing with Project Maverick. I will. Um, it was Disney actually came to Babel Media, which had recruited me from her bad mother to be their editor in chief and yeah. moved my family from Toronto to New York. Yeah. Disney bought Babel and pulled me over to the Los Angeles side to mm -hmm. run content for their Disney Interactive Women and Family division. Yeah. Um, so I was thrust from, I moved from an academic career to an independent writer and freelancer career to a uh, senior executive editorial and media yes. career, yeah. <laughs> corporate career. Yeah. So it, it was a massive transition. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot. Yeah. It was a mini MBA. Um, there was a lot of tremendous um, 
work that I did there. Yeah. I, I met some of the best people of my life there. Um, I, I left in part, I left to start my own company, Demeter mm -hmm. Media, um, because there were things that I wanted to do. I, I became so aware of the kind of world I wanted for my kids and especially yeah. for my daughter mm -hmm. and what I wanted to do to try to bring that into effect myself. Yeah. And I, I think that I'd proven to myself many times over in that decade yeah. <laughs> that, you know, hey, if, if, if I want to go down that road, I can, yeah. that it was not as hard as, as you might think to make the leap from that high-powered corporate media career into yeah. an entrepreneurial one. Yeah. yeah, well tell us about Project Maverick. Right, so Project Maverick is a project in development um, underneath the umbrella of my company, Demeter Media, yeah. um, and it, it's an effort to, um, I mean, to put it in the, you know, the most succinct terms, you know, we're asking the question, what if we raised a generation of Maverick girls? What if we yeah. raised girls to be rebels, innovators, entrepreneurs? What if we raised them to um, have faith in their vision and their ability to pursue it. We, yeah. we, there are tremendous girl organizations that do tremendous work right now in skill development and self-esteem development. Mm -hmm. We're asking, what can we do? What sort of experiences can we develop? What kind of community can we develop that's going to not empower girls, but remind girls that they have extraordinary power and they can use that power to change the world in massive ways. Very cool. Her blog is called Her Bad Mother, and be on the lookout for Project Maverick coming soon. Catherine Connors, thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Okay. And now we turn to our panelists. Rain? Catherine, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I don't even know where to start, so I think we're going to start with Monica, how do you juggle career and empowering women and doing all that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, the first thing I do is I put away that thought that um, I can do it all and have it all all at the same time. Mm -hmm. You do need help. You need to set expectations that you know, you're only one person. You have your role as a mother, as a business professional, and you have to prioritize. So for me, my family comes first. As long as my kids are fine, then I can go and be, you know, super mom at work, super mom at home, that kind of thing. So I feel like you have to find the balance for what works with you and your support system and your partner and your children have to have that expectation too that um, they have to know that mommy has another life outside of the home for me. Patrizia, what about you? Well, bravo for you. Thank I mean, you. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't have any roadmaps and I was kind of this rogue person, this maverick. And you know, I just have always flown by the seat of my pants and said, yes, I'll do that. But I didn't get married and have children, as you did. And I think that people always look at somebody else's life and think, wow, I wish I could put myself into that person's life. And every, every choice that we make comes with you know, great reward, but it also comes with sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And I think it's understanding you know, what is it that you really, really want. And at the end of the day, you have to say, I have to sleep with myself and be comfortable with my decisions. Laura Gale. Wow, <laughs> you are amazing, amazing. And it just shows that you are a really good role model for your daughter and son. Because who you are as a mother, and you are showing your son that when he grows up, that that's how he's going to treat his future wife mm -hmm. and future daughters good point. as well. Yeah. And I just think that's absolutely bravo. Awesome. And again, Monica, you again hit it right on the nose that you have to balance. And you have to show right from the beginning th that balance. That And also you come first as well. You and have no to come first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. But you have right. to come first. You as a person comes first. Okay. Because if you don't come first, if you don't feed yourself, you can't emotionally feed your family. Yeah. And Agreed, your These great Absolutely. comments, panelists. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. And thank you very much, Catherine Connors. Thank you. Okay. And we'll be right back. <laughs>
quick and easy ways to make our gift wrap look handcrafted. Hi, Diana. Hi. This looks so beautiful. I'm so Thank intrigued. You. What is this? What are you going to show us? I'm going to teach you how to make a easy and personalized gift wrap using just washi tape. And all of these materials have been provided by Paper Mart. So thank you so much for, for all of this stuff. Thank you. Okay, so we just have really simple washi tape. So if you're wondering what washi tape is, um, washi mm -hmm. tape is basically like a decorative tape that you can add um, not only for a purpose mm -hmm. as to stick things in, but you could also decorate with it. Okay. And the thing that makes uh, washi tape unique is that the tact is a little bit softer than mm -hmm. most. So mm -hmm. if you make an accident, you could just peel it off. And a little like painter's no... tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So ex you know what it is already? Yeah. Perfect. I know. <laughs> And it comes in really fun colors, like we have all sorts of colors here, and then it yeah. also comes in fun patterns. Very cool. And so. And, they, and you can get them, we know where you got yours, but you can you get them at any sort of yeah, stationery store? Yeah, you could go to Target. Target okay. has everything, or, <laughs> including Target? washi tape. Or Michaels? Or Michaels. Okay, crafts yeah. place? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, perfect. So I think most of these designs are pretty self-explanatory. Thank yeah. you. You could do so many different, you can layer patterns, mm -hmm. you could kind of have them go over, you could cut triangles, and you could also mm -hmm. do like little snowflake marks, yeah. whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm gonna teach you today is how to make a washi tape tassel. So oh, you can good. use this for oh. your gift wrapping and also like a keychain, or you can make it like a little garland and hang it over your dessert table, whatever you want. Very cool. And what you do basically is cut strips of washi tape. I already pre-cut some of these. Mm -hmm. And they come, um, you could honestly do it in whatever length you want, but I did mine in five inches. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stack them on top. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna fold them in half. And then I'm gonna get a piece of washi tape. Let's do this one. The trick is really to get everything pre-cut ahead of time. Yeah, it's yeah. probably a little bit easier. Yeah. I mean, it's so simple. This it is, is so simple. literally what you do, and it's like a little... And it looks so special. Tassel. It really does. It's exactly. so cute. Yeah. And you could also add like a little um, gift tag. Yes. Yeah, totally pass it along. Yeah. And you can download all of these watercolor gift tags on my website at chasingthem.com, so you don't even have to worry about that. Okay. And then I personalized this one for you, Caroline. Okay. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Caroline from Chasing Women. Oh, thank you so much. Of These are course. gorgeous. Yeah. Marine, what well, do you I want? know I have a favorite. <laughs> Which one's yours? Which this one? I want to wear this. <laughs> oh, perfect. I love that. It's so creative and fun. Thank mm -hmm. you. And you I, can use it for any occasion. Yeah, I mean, being a mom of four kids, this is a great way of having your kids wrap. Totally. I mean, their own birth when they go to a birthday party. Yeah. That's so you know, here, wrap. Or you can have, if, if, if decorating is too complicated or wrapping is too complicated for your child, you could wrap and then have them add yeah. the extra decoration. Yes, exactly. And it's versatile. Yeah, yeah. it's decorative. Totally. And That's I always tell my uh, clients, you should always wrap yourself up like a gift. And mm -hmm. so I'm really like, hey, go to your website, look at these <laughs> gifts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Love proof it. is in the package. Yeah. <laughs> very good. And well, you can personalize cute. it to who you're giving it to. So every gift wrap will be unique. You won't have, yeah. you won't have to use one wrapping for five different gifts, right. you know. Yeah, it just, it so the washi visual. tape comes in leopard print. It does, <laughs> it does. Perfect and for sparkles. Rain. She's all set. Yeah. Where's my <laughs> <lip>? <laughs> Definitely a sparkle. Yes, I have the sparkle one. Okay. Thank you, panelists, and thank you, Diana Kim. The company and blog is called Chasing Linen, and these are fabulous ideas. When we come back, we'll have our Kevin Berry Minute, and we'll hear your answers to our viewer questions. So quick, send in your responses. Be right back. <laughs> We've all been waiting for the man with his finger on the pulse of everything celebrity beauty. Come on out, Kevin Barry, for your Kevin Barry minute. Hello, Hi, Kevin. Caroline. How Hello. are you? Oh, I got Tracy. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh, love it. Thank you. Mascara. We're mascara. talking mascara today. What's going on? Well, it's not just any mascara. You always give me great assignments. Yes. It's celebrity mascara that is affordable. Perfect. So we're thinking of everyone. So nationwide, these are readily available. And we're gonna start with someone who's famous, but also a supermodel, Carly Kloss. Okay. Who is pictured here on the cover of Vogue with her good BFF, Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. Team Taylor. Yep. 
and her makeup artist is Quinn Murphy, and Quinn loves the quintessential classic and the pink and green, great lash. Well, this one but too. it's back with a twist, okay. and it has a really unique wand, and I washed it to see, and look at that. What it's, does the wand do? Well, it really reaches into the base for the baby lashes that haven't grown yet and brings yep. them out, but it doesn't clump. And so then if you, and oh, really what's so great, when I washed it, you can really flex Ooh. so it's not stiff, so you can really get in there and it won't hit your upper eyelid. It's amazing. Right, cool. So it's very truthful. Yeah. But the, truthful. it's a different formula. It's called Love or Lots of Lashes with a Heart. There it is. Lots so it's a little, of, oh, okay. a little different. Okay, that's how yes. we know the difference. The difference. And they oh, also okay. make a clear one. Lots but of lashes. A lot of makeup artists use this for eyebrows and on top of mascara if it gets clumpy and it's good for men's grooming. So it's more like, like a okay, hairspray for... A hairspray for okay. brows. It okay. gives you a lot of shine and it has a, more of a... <laughs> a fairy tale wand to make your yeah. dreams come true. <laughs> so, all for a three dollar yeah. mascara, but yeah, it really does give a lot of shine and gets good detail. Yeah, very cool. Okay, this is like your standard. Yep. I've been using uh, this one since like nineteen eighty. I think I was one when I started what? playing with makeup. Yes, and you, <laughs> Carolyn, your makeup artist because there's my mascara from high school. It was so funny. Yeah. So everyone knows that. Hello, yeah. panelists. Don't be shy. Okay, there we go, buddy. Come on, let's get a makeover. I wish you were looking great like a chihuahua. Um, so. Next, we've yeah. got, everyone's, everyone loves Olivia Wilde, who's been very yes. busy on vinyl, the HBO show. Mm -hmm. I mean, and with Martin Scorsese and Mick Jagger producing she's, it. She's everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, Who wouldn't yes. want to put a mascara on right. for them? <laughs> so, hello, Mick. How are you? So good to see you. Yeah. So this is, oh, no, sorry, wrong one. Olivia would hit me. She yes. is the face of Revlon. Okay. So in all fairness, but this, they really, really worked hard. And look at the little separation in there. Yeah. So it holds They are, it. like, very strategically engineered, yeah, you can see. Yeah, look at that. And yeah. it filters out. And this is their new ultimate okay. all-in-one. Yep. Thickens, lengthens, gets yep. you ready for your HBO show. You're ready to rock and roll, <laughs> looking fresh. Get one of these and you'll get an HBO show. Yeah, you go. Cool. That's how it is. Okay. And so, some would say the best for last. We have Rihanna. Yes. Looking, looking beautiful yes. for the Met Ball, she trying to see the looking glass. Okay. And her makeup artist, Mila Morales, you know, when you ask her, who's your, who's your client? Rihanna, boom, mic drop. <laughs> you don't need anybody else on your roster. I do Rihanna, step yeah. off, there you go. Yeah. I mean, look at those lashes. And Myla has gone on the record talking about the L'Oreal. When I said, everyone's so familiar with this mascara, the Voluminous. Yeah. Everyone loves this. Yeah. But this is a new twist, and it has a little bend on it. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? What is the, what is the, the formula for this? Like, what makes it different? Is it the, is it the wand, or is it the, the formula of the mascara? Fantastic question. Yes. Especially in the case of these. Yeah. It's a little bit of both, because they have, these are, Formulas, with the exception of Revlon, we are familiar with, but they yep. have upped the stakes. They do yep. something for the lashes. They're not just sitting there. They've got a keratin angle. Everyone seems to be including that. Yep. So it does something good while it's there, but this also pulls out. So it's two. That's a perfect it's, question. It's it really does. One. Yeah, you very have to look cool. at it. It's very good. It's very, very interesting. Well, it's product. nice to know that celebrities are just like us buying mascaras in, in drugstores. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you run in. Everyone wants a quick hit. You know what I mean? It's like Saks Fifth Avenue isn't open 24 hours, but yeah. CVS is. Yeah, very good. And sometimes you just want the thrill of a purchase. What do you think over there? Well, this, actually, this brand has been my go-to for years. See? Oh, L'Oreal one. Yeah, the oh. luminous. Yeah. It really, it really is. What it is and, with and at the end, when you're when it's starting to die, yeah. then I use a brush and I use it for my eyebrows. See? Yeah. So, is it, do you like the wand, or is it? The, do you think it's the formula of the of the makeup? It, nah, I, uh, do I have to know this? I don't even I know. Think, I, I think it's. I think it's the weight of the the like the handle like yeah there's something about the weight of yeah. it it's a good bearing yeah. so you can instead of it being like uh, trying to be cute yeah. it's it's the weight of it and maybe it is the the wand but i just like i, I just like the feeling of it it doesn't have that funky smell that a lot of mascaras right. have that's my go to yeah. also i like the shape of the wand yeah. i think I it helps wonder, is it, is it the arc say, or is it yeah, the, yeah. and i must say it's the shape of the wand yeah for me it's that nice curvy shape yeah. I oh, actually want to try lot. this one because yeah. I'm, I mean, I use like a safety pin to separate my oh, eyelashes. Don't right. try this at home. That's great. <laughs> okay. That is beauty Very contestant. They, no, I know. I'm just Very saying, I have school. one just for the, I, I know I'm old school, but this one feels pretty sturdy and yeah. not like a soft. So yeah. this one I can yes. tell this could be like could, a safety pin so, replacement. Yeah, cool. Don't try that at home, like for yeah. real. <laughs> <laughs> well, Olivia Wilde is high uh, approved yeah. of that yeah. Exactly. There you go. All right, Kevin, that's it. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful vision. Oh, I'm gorgeous. I'll see you I'll see your lashes. Bye. Okay, all right, all right. Rain, Manji, come on over. Come on over. We're going to read some answers to our viewer questions. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, why don't you go first? Oh, remind us what the, what the question was. Yes. Okay, so remember the question was, what advice would you give your teenage self that you wish someone would have given you? Okay, so you're going to read yours first. Okay. Flavia Lawrence from Falls Church, Virginia writes, I would tell myself to spot... Mm. Writes, I would... Mm. Writes, I would tell myself to stop spending so much time seeking the approval of others. 
I hear ya. Now that I'm older, I can see what a waste of time it is to be anyone other than my true self. That's so true. Okay. So true, Flavia. Yeah. yeah, good for you, Flavia. Okay, and Lynn Chen White from Bronxville, New York writes, I, I would say don't worry so much about the future. There is so little we can do to control it and worrying just takes time away from enjoying the present moment. So true. Yeah. We so only true. go back to our teenage years. So what do they say? Worrying is like a rocking chair. It gets you nowhere. Or I don't know. Something like, like that. It rhymes and it rhymes Google it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this has been fun, Rain. Thank you so much. And thank you to our panelists, Patricia, mm -hmm. Laura Gale, and Monica. Thank you so much. And um, also a very special thank you to our uh, our uh, Pat and Mascot Sammy Bunny and World Foundation. Yes, and yes. the Bunny World Foundation. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. And as if people want to help, what should they do? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Donate, volunteer, and foster. We always need money for the um, vet bills when we get the, the bunnies in that aren't feeling so well. Yeah. Uh, fosters to help grow the network so that we can adopt out more animals. Yeah, just like Brianna. Very yeah. setting a good example for our viewers. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being here. And panelists, why don't you come on over and we'll say goodbye. Come give a bunny right. a hug. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Remember, everybody, to visit us on our website, Facebook, and Twitter, and sign up to receive our digital magazine. See you soon, everybody. Bye-bye.